Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today are two, I'm going to say old friends, because we've been working alongside each other in lots of different capacities uh, for a long time. Um, with me is the past and current leadership of Wyman, Claire Winnikin, Allison Williams. Welcome to The Preventable. Oh, thanks, Nicole. We're Great so to excited Thank to you. be here. Thank yeah. you for inviting us. First of all, Claire, I'm mad at myself that I haven't invited you before. <laughs> I'm like, I'm mad at myself because I was thinking, I was like, why haven't, why haven't they come on before? And so that's my bad. So oh, I'm sorry. Well, we're here now. You're here now. We're here now. Uh, congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. How many years at Wyman? 37. And you were at camp, right? Like you, you I did I started camp. at the camp uh, to uh, teach environmental science. Um, so between September and May, we rent the facility and we have lots of groups that come out. And at that time, we were heavily into environmental science. And so I came out to teach for three months and and then I stayed for the summer and then I <laughs> stayed for a year and, you know, then time. And then happened. time. <laughs> and then time. So. And you were executive director for how many years? A um, little over seven. A little over seven. Yes. And you were one of the first people. Sorry, Allison, I'm going to pull you in in a second. <laughs> all good, Nicole. But you were one of. So first of all, let me let me go back in the in the time machine and tell you that. And I think we've talked about this before, mm. that when I first started at the organization, which I've been here for 16 years, when I first started. It was almost like. We, I'm not saying y'all, but like mm -hmm. we almost thought of Wyman as a competitor because mm -hmm. I don't think, quite frankly, I don't think we knew enough about what y'all did. Right. And because you worked with teenagers and we worked with teenagers, right. we were like, oh, like, you know, Wyman got that grant. Like, oh, darn it. You know what I mean? Or, right. or how come it wasn't us? Or yes. we should have a camp. Well, we can't have a camp. Wyman has a camp and <laughs> they're doing this great program and we want to be doing that. And I think that as I have learned and as my our staff have learned more and more about what you all do, we're not competitors. We're really like true like collaborators, which is like really overused. But we're like not doing the same thing. No. So we can enhance no. what we're doing. Absolutely. We're not in the same. We're in the same space, mm -hmm. but what we do is very different. And I think that's a change I've seen in the sector. I would overall, agree totally. That you know maybe twenty years ago, it was. It did seem like a more competitive environment, yeah. but particularly in the, I would say in the last 20 years. Uh, and then especially since COVID. And especially since COVID, yeah. but but really people just don't operate that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I suppose there are some, but by and large, the other agencies in town that serve adolescents, we all work very collaboratively and harmoniously and build on each other's strengths. And I think that is, you know, First of all, important to do. Sure. Um, and it also is just a smart way to go about the work. Right. Because right? let's face it, there's plenty of work to be done. <laughs> there are so many needs. There's plenty of work to be done. Right. And that's, you know, Nicole, she started talking about that. I, that That's always one of those questions that when we, we get that, you know, whether it's from a funder or someone trying to decide where to put their resources, I'm like, oh, no, this isn't, this can't be an either or. Right. When you really think about the authentic needs of young people, you think about what is happening in our community, the, the level of needs that are out there and truly what can happen if we really invest in powerful and partnership ways mm -hmm. in like the current gifts and the future potential of our young people absolutely working through partnerships is i mean it is the only way to be as we continue to move forward and my team is and you know, claire has heard me say this and she would say this and i will continue to say it there's really nothing that we do at wyman that's not in partnership with someone else that's right. right of course that's right. so that's of right. course and that's how it how we should roll. be yeah. mm -hmm. right when we don't live in a silo yeah. Mm -hmm. for the most part. And so how could we think that one agency would just serve one, one like serve all the needs? That doesn't make sense. No, absolutely. That doesn't make sense. Absolutely. And I think for years, 
funders were sort of pushing it down our throats, Mm -hmm. right? Like, you need to collaborate, you need Mm -hmm. to collaborate, you need to collaborate. And I think we were so, like, annoyed by it. (laughs) And then, like, once we started deciding, like, hey, that actually makes a lot of sense. And for me in particular, I... You very early on, when I stepped into this role, you very early on kind of pulled me aside at like a United Way event or something. And you were like, hey, me and some other executive directors, like we meet. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if nothing else, it's sometimes commiserating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sometimes it's problem solving. Sometimes it's trying to tackle an issue with lots of different voices. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm here. Yeah. And that to me, as somebody being from Wyman, which in my brain was like this, it is this wonderful organization that has a great reputation, of a really rich history, has done some things that Prevented still wants to do. I was like, oh, wow, yes, I want to be part of that. You know, I want to be part of that group where I can learn from, be mentored by people who have done this. And so In case I haven't articulated it before, I would just like to say thank you. Well, And there are many times where you and Susan Kidder and other amazing women have, mostly women, some men, but mostly mostly executive director women, have saved my sanity. So (laughs) I really would like to say thank you. Well, you're very welcome. And um, I will say right it back at you because... We have had many cups of tea mm-hmm. <laughs> together. Mm-hmm. Uh, At Kitchen House. Yes. We, <laughs> RIP. We uh, missed yes, that place. I know, miss, miss my Kitchen House. <sighs> and, uh, but, but those times are so important. Um, and I think, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll just give a nod to Allison to keep that up. Yes. Because I know uh, that she, no has, other a, way she has a rich <laughs> network in this community and she leverages it. And, but it's, it really is, um, it's a small community of executive directors in the St. Louis region. And so we have to be able to, to come together and support each other. And, um, like you said, do all those things. And you certainly did those for me as well. So, well, thank you. You are welcome. And thank you back. (laughs) I, anybody who steps into this role that I, I kind of pay it forward and say, I don't have to be your people, but you need to find your people Mm -hmm. that share your job position because being an executive director having a board to answer to that are in charge but not totally in charge and having funders and navigating that and trying to make sure that all of your eggs are not in one funding basket while also you know i mean that's right and not being seen as too corporate but also you're running a business so you need to make money i mean there are a lot (laughs) uh there's a lot of nuances of nonprofit leadership and so i don't care who you find but find somebody and you know that that mentorship is really important You know what I love, Nicole, about this conversation that you just brought up is what you're talking about is the foundation of connections and relationships, Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Like in this specific space, in this specific role. But, you know, when you you think about we just finished um, our 125th anniversary last year, and I know it's so foundational to the work that you all do at Prevent Ed, the foundation of all great work with young people is relationships and Mm -hmm. is connections. And so I just like, I love the way you just modeled like, you know, lifting that up initially and everything you said about my predecessor, Claire Winnikin, is just so true. (laughs) That is just how Claire rolled. Y'all make me blush. Yes. Well, the the blushing is is well-deserved. But speaking of connection, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that we have a problem with connection, a lack of connection. Yes. And in the substance use world, there's a common saying that says the opposite of addiction is connection. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is something that you hear in the rooms a lot at different fellowship groups. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, we know that there are people who use substances who feel perfectly connected, but also maybe they don't don't feel connected to themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And we've seen in the last several years, we know that, that people, young people in particular, are less connected than ever before. And you all decided not to just read about it, but you all decided to do something about it. You have an amazing program that is 
exploding, yes. right? Yes. Talk about TCP. Yes. Oh, I All love right. it. Thank you so much for the introduction, Nicole, because like there is nothing that lights me up more right now than talking about the team. You connection. can see <laughs> it on your face, by the way. Yes. Like so, you can see it on your yeah. face. And it yeah. And, 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 it, and it's exciting. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's so interesting because it's actually a program we started developing in partnership um, with Dr. Joseph Allen. He's a great adolescent developmental psychologist from the University of Virginia. He was actually a researcher on one of our other programs, our teen outreach program. That top we, for short, top right? For short. Okay. Yep. We do that. That is all over the country. It is all over the we're country. We're going to come back to that in a yep, minute, but absolutely. go ahead. Absolutely. Okay. So we were working with Joe, and this was probably uh, 2012. Eight? Yeah. 2012, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first conversations. Yeah. The first conversations came up. And because that know, was really when, like, I, I don't know what was the impetus for this, but that was really when like social media and like it kind of became this thing where parents right. and teachers and all these people were yeah. like, social media is destroying the fabric of our <laughs> right. lives, you know? I mean, Absolutely. is that sort of the impetus for some of this? Some of it. We were hearing from some of our national partners uh, with who are doing the teen outreach program that they were seeing, they were starting to see the disconnection happening mm. with young people mm. in and they were you know they were looking for something that would help um but joe was also doing work and there were other dynamics going on yeah. at the same time but it, that's what sort of sparked us to call him and have that conversation and it was um our our dear departed friend devon wilson and uh, joe miller and joe allen and myself in this little room i remember being on the speakerphone and just like he was like, I think I can help you. There's something here. <laughs> and There's he's like, I here. think we have a collaboration that we can develop yeah. here. And There's that yeah. C there we word went. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it there is. We yeah. And, you know, and it was so organic initially, right? Mm-hmm. So it was, you know, Joe and some of his amazing graduate students, yeah. you know, shout out to any graduate student oh, in the right. space of mm-hmm. social work, psychology, yes. educate, you know, human services fields, you know, who would work to just kind of put some curriculum pieces together. Um, We would actually come back and test those with young people that we were serving both in University City School Mm -hmm. District at the time and um, in the near South Side neighborhood Mm -hmm. of of, uh, St. Louis City and young people would give us feedback. So having their perspective. Oh, isn't that so, yeah. Oh, it was so valuable. It's a game changer. It was amazing. They would literally get on the phone with these postdocs who were writing stuff. that's awesome. And so they'd hear from them. They'd be like, oh, you know, I liked this part of the lesson. This part was really that was boring. really yeah um, so. yeah and that's to me how you know when people are like well how do you know that they're not telling you what you want to hear well look see this do you see this you metric right here when they say like this lesson was really boring like they're they're not lying yeah. they're gonna give it yeah. to you yeah. straight absolutely. yeah absolutely so you know it's this wonderful organic young people involved joe bringing his expertise wyman bringing our expertise and um, fast forward, we got it to a point that it was ready to actually do a strong study on. Mm. Uh, so Joe, through some of his connections, was able to get funding back. And we started this in 2016 then uh, from the William T. Grant Foundation. Mm. So shout out to them for mm-hmm. uh, their support in this space. But we did a three-year study here in the St. Louis region. So we were really thrilled. This is another one of those St. Louis-born and made programs. Totally. Right? Mm-hmm. St. Louis is a small town. Down that likes its um, likes its props. So yes. there's the St. Louis flowers there. You there. Go. Um, but we were able to. We had two team members who were um, Heather Fullerton and Crystal Smith, who were just fantastic and amazing facilitators and so gifted with young people. And so we worked across um, three school districts in the St. Louis region. We did four rounds of TCP. It's a it's a semester long program with high school mm-hmm. students. So this is specific to high school age students okay. in particular. And it's small groups. It's small okay. groups. It's a maximum of about 15 young people. And essentially you have about a 12 week curriculum. So it fits really well within that one semester time frame. And the curriculum was eventually put together using like other interventions or foundations of interventions that had been shown to be successful. Mm. So we took these different things and kind of eventually threaded them together, wove them together in a way that was cohesive, made sense. And while we did this research study, we continued to get feedback from the young people who were involved. So we were also able to um, plan, do, learn, adjust is a big part of how we operate at (laughs) Wyman. Plan, do, learn, Learn, adjust. adjust. So we did that. We did that throughout. Um, 
Long and short, you know, for every young person who was in the program, they had been randomly selected and there was another young person not in the program. Mm -hmm. The uh, third year, Joe was able really to take um, all of that information, all of that data, and four months post-program. So that's a part that we were really excited about. A lot of program results are just right at the end of it, right? This is four months afterwards. So this program had staying power. We saw, you know, young people had lower rates of depressive symptoms, high use of social coping strategies, stronger peer bonding, stronger connections to their schools. We did all of these in academic settings, so that's part of what we really looked at. Mm -hmm. You think about the things that, you know, were baseline concerns for young people going into COVID as we watched the adolescent mental health crisis sort of creep up on us, but that were incredibly amplified by COVID, right? And it's the things that this program has strong results in. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, the young people who are a part of it and the facilitators who do the program right. just love it. They just right. dig in. It feels like, um, I think to some extent, they feel like they can be human yeah. in a space. It's a really and really comfortable, safe, supportive environment. Mm. And so many young people have been missing that. So many adults have been missing right. that. So um, I think, you know, the, our staff members and our colleagues who are who are delivering the program, it, you know, they get fulfilled mm-hmm. so much yeah. by those conversations and and being in that trusting kind of supportive environment. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. So what we're, you know, what we started to do with this right uh, right before the pandemic hit is work with, a f- you know, we were directly delivering this at U City High School. Um, they have just been a phenomenal partner and we appreciate the opportunity to work there, but started to pilot it with some of our partners in our, our national network. Mm-hmm. So as you mentioned, we work with about 75 partners um, across the country, and that includes organizations in St. Louis, right, who think one of our evidence-based programs, TOP or TCP, really meet a need that they have. We provide the training, the curriculum, the ongoing technical assistance and support, the evaluation side of things. Um, and it, you know, it it works really well. There's no need for folks to reinvent the wheel if we don't need to. So we had just started piloting this with some national network partners, got through a first semester, then COVID hit, so you know that slowed down yep. just mm-hmm. for a moment. But it is really, um, it's really a significant strategic focus for our organization right now. The needs are so clear. Yeah. Whether you see it coming from the Surgeon General, you know, calling this lack of connections literally a public health crisis. Whether you read alerts from the American Academy of Pediatrics, you read the the Centers for Disease Control, all of the statistics that that are coming out. Um, it is just the point in time where. We know there are needs for young people. There is not one singular magical solution. And we have a really strong opportunity. It's a tool that we, in the tool belt. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And imagine, you know, young people have lost, no matter where they were, you know, in their you know kind of growing up time when the pandemic hit, our kids have all lost generally two years of typical mm-hmm. developmental experience. Mm-hmm. So whether you were four and five or one and two or you know, 16 and 17, yep. that has an impact. So this idea of being in a space where there is intentional work that is done to just really unpack connections and mm-hmm. relationships and experience that within the group. And I think that's one of the pieces that's important. It's not it's not as much about the curriculum as what the curriculum and activities enable within the group for those powerful types of peer support, those powerful types of, oh my gosh, Claire just said that. I thought I was the only one who experienced something like that. Mm -hmm. For those types of ahas to happen and then for young people to take those skills and use them outside Mm -hmm. of the Teen Connection Mm -hmm. Project as well. That actually reminds me of something. When we were reviewing the the research after the, the study was completed, one of the things that jumped off the page for me was this this interviews that they did with other students in the school who were not participating in the program. Yep. And they asked them about oh. the students who were in the program. And they were noticing. Huh. They were saying things like, Get out. you know, Nicole's just more approachable. Or, you know, Allison, yeah, I'd like to be friends with Allison now. I didn't really, you know know her before but she's been you know kind of out front and 
more friendly and 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 yeah. just these little pieces so you can begin to see how something like this could be planted in an environment and then it just sort of blossoms as more and more people have the skills to build and maintain mm-hmm. healthy relationships in a school, you know, in any kind of setting. Right. I mean, you think about, you know, we just had the Super Bowl, right? And, right. And the ads that the NFL was doing about bullying. Oh, my gosh. Right? I know. So I know. This is this is really front and center for so many people. It doesn't matter what kind of background you come mm-hmm. from. Mm-mm. And it's a national u- it's a national issue. Connection Absolutely. is universal. That's right. Yeah. The need for connection. Like yeah. it it is what makes us human. Mm-hmm. It is what separates yeah. us from other animals. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when we take so part of what we did for this is, you know, developed a whole training process mm-hmm. from it. And the training takes those who are becoming facilitators through, um, you know, a pseudo teen connection project experience. And right? can I interrupt for a second and just like help people understand because I think this is something that it took me a while to understand is that with this project and with your top project I mean Wyman is really trained in the art of facilitation right like you all will train and support other people to facilitate it so it's not like you're trying to go into x school you Allison and deliver this program I mean maybe you like could but you also know that that's not really like how it works best. So you train the other folks, whether it's school administrators, other agencies, Mm -hmm. whatever, and you really train them to facilitate this program that you all have created. That's right. And that includes adults, and you also train young people to be sort of ambassadors for your... It's kind it's of primarily adults. Okay. At this point. Okay. Okay. Although you know you tapped into one of those, um, you know, blue sky dreams. Uh-huh, that we right. Had. Exactly. What, you know mm-hmm. what can it look like to yeah. kind of you know train we, young yeah, people. Yeah, we to are work looking at another and, yeah. uh, implementation model where they they are trained. It's a peer to peer. Oh, peer teaching. So, so That's where it's so, at, man. So I know, could talk to you all day yeah, about we're, peer we're, teaching. We're checking that. We're, we're, yeah. we're checking that one. But out. for now, it's yeah. primarily adults, and you're mm-hmm. training them as the eyes and ears, the boots on the ground. Correct. They're the ones that you're training in the program. People, I sh- will, will mention that people pay, mm-hmm. right? And you have funders and and great yes. sponsors and all and donors, but that yeah. people pay to bring the program to their school to their community okay that's correct okay and part of the rationale around that when we when we launched the national network which is where these programs are housed is that there's so much great work happening out all Mm -hmm. over this country right there are so many talented agencies and organizations and schools and they know their students their young people they well, know it's the all environment. About relationships. They yeah. know the environment. So us coming in yep. on top of that isn't is not always additive. Right. But if we could empower the folks and that ampl- are there yeah, totally. and give them yeah. tools that they can use. And like you said, so our focus is really on you know, on facilitation of programs that are proven to work. Yes. And if they learn those facilitation skills and they get to continue to practice them with an evidence-based program mm-hmm. where it starts to, they can really see the result of that quickly, then they can apply those skills to everything uh, else to they're everything doing. Else. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I cut you off before. Did oh, I no. Cut you off? No, okay. you're fine. You know, I think the, the the one piece I was going to add to that is when you talk about our work really focused on training others, that was a really strategic decision that our board made back in the early 2000s. Really? Yeah, that strategic Ish. plan was, was right around 2000. Yeah. And then the launch of the network really took off around 2009. Yeah. And that was really about, um, so Wyman does, we deliver these programs as well. Okay. And and the reason that's really important is Claire would always say, we eat our own cooking, right? So we are not going to go out and train you in something that we don't have folks, their boots on the ground, it's their like ears to the ground. It's consultants that have never doing. worked in the field. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? 
Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, All right, continue. so that so that mm-hmm. is really that that is foundational to mm-hmm. what we believe and, and mm-hmm. how we approach. And you know, as we thought about this in terms of strategy, our strategy is really focused on how can we leverage and create the the best, most positive impact for young people, right? So we talked earlier about where and how partnerships are so important to that. If we have these proven proven programs, we could try to grow and just make Wyman really, really big. Right. Or we can be really smart and do do our It's like slice. Do you go wider or deeper exactly. and you're really going deeper going and, deeper and wider through the network exactly but in, in an intentional way in partnership right. right yeah so speaking of the network okay so one of my first meetings with claire so i'm a i don't know if i've talked about this on the pod before but um i have my master's in public health and i really got into the evaluation side of it mm-hmm. so qualitative quantitative okay and One of my goals, I don't know if it's going to happen, but we're going to manifest it, (laughs) is we have been trying for 40 years to get one of our programs on a registry. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which now NREP, which was the National Registry of Evidence, but that no longer exists. But now there are basically every state now has the kind of their own thing. Right. Yes. And other... Yeah. Entities have them and whatever. Grant makers have sure. them. Sure. Universities have them. Yes. Kind of and a, this is like a cottage a, industry yeah, of these things. It is a cottage <laughs> industry. And a peek behind the curtain here. This is kind of shop talk, but it's hard to get funding if you're not on a registry or if you don't have the outcomes year over year over year that mm-hmm. you can prove because you have been fully evaluated. And evaluation ain't cheap. No. And so for organizations that are trying to get on a registry or to scale it Mm -hmm. so that other states, because they've got this thing that they know works Mm -hmm. and they can show for years, in our case, 40 years, that you've got consistent outcomes. We can predict them within a percentage point, Mm -hmm. but we haven't had necessarily the robust evaluation because that takes funding and time, mm-hmm. time. you mentioned that these conversations study. started yeah. in 2012. You have to develop the program, and then you do a three-year study. Which required funding. Which required specific funding. Specific and mm-hmm. a great research partner. Right. Yeah. And so when I first came to you, one of the things I said was, how did you do it? And you were <laughs> like, well, how much time do you have? <laughs> oh, but you have to tell the top story. Okay. Because, yeah. because it's, it's and, really, really and, But it, it's something that I think most people are like, oh, well, how, you know, we've had board members before. We don't now board is great but it's like well maybe maybe we should just go to new york well like mm-hmm. okay and how right like i would yeah. love to be able to have one of our partners in new york use some of our programs but how do you scale it how do you replicate yeah. it how do you train mm-hmm. to make sure that the program is being implemented with fidelity yes. how do and that takes a huge i mean and you have staff people that that's what they do we do now. Because of the strategic <laughs> yes. decision that your board made. Right. Yes. Yes. But it yeah. took time. It took time. To it took quite a bit of time to, to, to get it established and um, and to, to enroll people in that possibility. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and to getting on those lists. So I remember early, this was even before we started the network, and I was having a conversation with Susan Philipper, who is a nationally recognized evaluator. Okay. Um, Philibur and Associates, and they had done work on top Okay, back in the early 80s. And so I was interviewing her on the phone just to kind of get some backstory on the mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. And she kept saying, Claire, you, you don't understand what you have here. This is so rare that you have both quantitative evidence. Which is numbers. Numbers. Mm-hmm. And qualitative evidence which are the anecdotes. The anecdotes, but the how. The how. Because yes. they also the, evaluated you gotta, the how. what made it work. Mm-hmm. And she said, there are just a handful of programs in the country that mm. have that, that have both of those. Because the how is how you replicate. Yes. Right? You can have the evidence that something works 
all day long. But if you don't know how to get those results again and again. And so we had little I think that's what we're missing. That were saying things like, you know, students reported that the facilitator really liked and cared about them. Now, that seems rather simple, doesn't it? But think about all Not when the, you're a teenager, though. When you're a yeah. teenager, <laughs> you often think that a lot of adults don't like don't you. Don't like you. <laughs> well, because a lot of them act like they don't like you. Exactly. <laughs> um, and, and teenagers can be a little bristly sometimes. Yes. So sometimes maybe, you know, they're... they're and we uh, were, too, when yes. we were teenagers. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some of us still are. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, ha- being able to... Build that into our training model. Yes, like the how here, to build were eight rapport. Different elements and... that we understood that were key, and those were the things that we needed to make sure that were replicated. Mm. Because anybody can follow a curriculum, sure, but if you can't follow the process that goes along with it and who you are in that space with young people, mm-hmm. then you're not going to really be successful. So, which goes back to connection. Which goes back exactly. to connection. Exactly. Yeah. Almost all of those elements tie back to connection to yeah. building a healthy connection yeah yeah you know nicole it's interesting because as claire talks about top um and in, top is oh. a teen pregnancy prevention no no it's a youth development program that has great teen pregnancy prevention outcomes thank you, <laughs> there you thank go. you for there clarifying you exactly. thank you for clarifying yeah. okay yeah. And, great and some academic you know risk factor sure outcomes yes and... that's my ignorance thank you for no, clarifying no, okay you're good and all those great social and emotional skill development yeah. pieces, which awesome. we know is the foundation of all of that right yeah so you know as as we think back and we we think back over wyman's time um we were really fortunate that claire had found the teen outreach program back in the day when we were doing work with adolescents again in the near south side community and the parents um, did, did a big survey of the adults in the community around what was needed. And the big piece that they said is, you know, our adolescents need something more than basketball mm. um, that's available, right? Like, what else is there? So, Especially if you don't play basketball. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. And, yeah, no, like, no yeah. shade on basketball. Right. But, it, but it, like, if but, you don't do that, right. like, then what? Exactly. And they needed more. And so Claire very wisely kind of went and said, well, what is out there? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We found Top. We loved Top. And um, eventually our board had the opportunity to purchase the Whoa. rights to the Teen Outreach Program. So much of that research that had been done actually came with it. With right. It. So we didn't do that first part, but we got to really then live from the benefits of what that looked like. Um, and then when the federal government puts out dollars that are available, if you are on an evidence-based yes. practice list, which is what TOP was, that's what got the network mm. up and rolling, right? Um, so then when it came came time, so we learned a lot from that, right? We were lucky, we were smart, and we seized an opportunity yeah. And you had a board that was bought in. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and right. my predecessor, Dave Hilliard, mm-hmm. um, who was the executive at the time, uh, when I came to him and said, I, I think we should buy this because Cornerstone Consulting, who had it at the time, was changing their business model and they were going to be shedding the teen outreach okay. program. And they contacted me and I ran into his office and I was like, we should buy it. And he was like, convince the board and it's a go. <laughs> and I thought, how the heck am I going to do that? <laughs> no idea. But I had some good coaching, mm-hmm. and we had a great board uh, subcommittee that put me through my paces for about nine months until we Whoa. had we had um, a good model. And, Again, it's that and we, time. It and all takes negotiated, time. We negotiated the the price and and were able to acquire it, and then we just replicated it the way the prior owner of the program had for a couple of years, so that we could figure out what sure. we had mm-hmm. and then and then the board really invested in building out this new model this national mm-hmm. network and that was um that was pivotal for yeah. the organization absolutely so you know today to 75 partners who you know in 2024 will serve collectively nearly 30,000 young people in st louis and across the country um well, and it generates revenue it generates revenue, it's, and yeah. and I mean, you know, since then, we started the network, we've served somewhere in the range of three hundred and fifty thousand young people. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. So you fast forward when we had this opportunity to work with Joe Allen then around uh-huh. Teen Connection Project. 
we had a better sense of okay what some of what some of this took but it was also the partnership with the right researcher we called it a research practice partnership right to- it oh, wasn't yep. the researcher joe is certainly not the kind of person to come in and you know lord over you and here's exactly what needs to be done i mean it was a true partnership as we talked about before from the developmental side of things to talking about learnings to talking about where we go with this um and then he was the person who was able because of his track record to access the dollars, the research dollars that yep. we needed to support that. We needed, you know, we needed to hire staff to do that. Right. You need, you can't just do something like that. Oh, by the way, on top of all other duties. As Correct. Assigned, oh, right? yeah, right. <laughs> right, right, right. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was a beautiful opportunity, but then we learned and, and we learned and we knew what it takes to then get on those evidence-based practice so lists. So is TCP and, on that list? So Teen Connection Project is now on two lists. Oh, so it's on... God, class- I'm so like yes. jealous, but in the best possible way, <laughs> you know, yep. like I'm so envious, but I'm also yep. so happy. And it's sort of for us at Prevent Ed, it, and I'm not blowing smoke up y'all's butt but it like it sets the like you all set the bar in terms of where we want our programs to go in terms of the scale and the reach um and the evaluation because a lot of us at prevented we're nerds we're evaluation Mm -hmm. nerds Mm -hmm. and we make no bones about it yeah and we want that and so we're cheering for you and we're also like oh we need to do that we need to get there so we need to go out for more of those cups like i need to pick yes. up where you and claire yeah. left off because again it, the doable. it is doable it's and doable. it does take a lot of time it takes a lot of time the, it's not just an overnight thing you can't right. just send in your study and no. and expect that they're going to put you on the no. list um i remember one of i think it was nrep actually i know where you're going with this um <laughs> There was one that we sent them the materials, hard copies, and it, I mean, I'm talking about banker boxes mm-hmm. full of stuff uh-huh. that, they, yep. that they required three copies of everything kind of thing. I shipped it, no kidding, three times because they kept losing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then, even then, you because oftentimes this is, you know, it it is somebody's part-time job to, to manage that, and so... Or there's turnover or whatever. There's different different aspects to it. And um, so you have to just kind of be a dog with a bone and just keep on them until you, you get there. Can I tell you, this is like <laughs> it's gonna happen, so it's nuts gonna happen. that gonna this is the conversation <laughs> we're having because we have, I think I've shared with you both before, we have a um, cannabis peer education program. Mm-hmm. We have had a randomized control trial. It had really positive results. But it was a small sample size, right? So now we mm-hmm. need bigger, and that's mm-hmm. part of it too, right? And so we have been working in our region, but also we've been getting requests from people outside of our region. But, you know, nothing is free. Mm-hmm. So it's like how can we have enough in the game where it makes sense for our staff to go and train it? Because right now we're still going in and training it and then doing yeah. a trainer of trainers. All super interesting for those at home, but I, some of you are like <laughs> leaning in because this is interesting to you. We get anyway, around this too. Yes, Nicole. right. <laughs> so we have been trying for a year, a year to get the program, quote unquote, sold, right, to mm-hmm. other kind of counties or other organizations throughout the state. We have one person who this is like, she's been doing this, right, mm-hmm. in addition to some other things she's doing, but this has been her thing. And yesterday we got word that another county in the state wants it and is going to pay for our staff to go. I started crying. Like when I got the the message, I started crying. And so we sent out an email to the staff saying after a year of work, Emma has made this happen. Our It's Complicated program is expanding to other places. And I have to tell you, like our staff were so excited. Of course. Because they've seen. They know the work. They know the work. And they've seen what she's been doing. Very unglamorous work, by the way. You know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. having the meetings, being told no Mm 14,000 times. Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. And knowing that if you get more data, you can make your case stronger, but also you can't. You're like locked, right? How do I get more data without more funding? And how do I get more funding without more data? Like, how does that work? And sometimes data isn't even the thing that sells. Yes. Yes. It's it's the suite of you have to have great data. You have to have really good processes and and trainings. And sometimes you have to just figure out 
what it is that yeah. the, the the entity that you're dealing with, whether it's a school or a county or whatever, what's what is the issue that they're trying to tackle, and is this actually the right fit? And I think that's been part of you know with TCP Teen Connection Project, it's speak. We're just fortunate in the sense only that people were beginning to recognize yeah, that, that this it is, is an top issue. of mind yeah. for people. So that's great for TCP, but it's, you know, all the other things that folks are doing to try and help build connection mm-hmm. for young people. The fact that that is the zeitgeist right now mm-hmm. in the field is is um that's going to help us It's get an this. opportunity. We're going to get yeah. this to a lot more young people who really 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 need it. Need it. Yeah. Need it. And I will say, well, a couple of things, Nicole, on that side of things. One, just going back, congratulations. Because Thank you. Is, Emma, I hope you're listening. Yes. <laughs> yes. Way congratulations, to go, Emma. Emma. And it really, and I think for our team, right, it's, they they believe so, it's, it's yeah. all about relationships again, yeah. right? And that's where those partnerships come from. They believe so powerfully in the program they love the partners that they that they work with and helping to support them yeah. and there's so much learning that comes from that right so it's just about getting that flywheel going um but i will say um i'm guessing there can be like a link to our website on here somewhere. absolutely but but shout it out yeah. how do people find you so wymancenter.org w-y-m-a-n-c-e-n-t-e-r.org um but we do uh thanks to um an anonymous funder in the st louis region we do have some fun in 24 and 25 to bring other St. Louis, Missouri region folks. Uh, we can even go across the river into oh. Illinois, you know, when we think about the greater, the metropolitan mm-hmm. region, who want to be able to deliver Teen Connection Project. So, you know, if this has piqued anyone's interest, or if you are a parent and this has piqued your interest mm-hmm. and you know your school needs this or you want to see this for your child, again, these would be organizations who know that they can serve high school age youth. They right. have staff who are available to do this. Um, but the dollars that we have available would help cover training costs, would help cover curriculum costs, and we would do ongoing, you know, technical assistance with these organizations. So probably by the time this airs, uh, we have an RFP process that will be up and live. A request um, for proposal. Yep, mm-hmm. request for proposal and available. And again, as Claire said, this is part of our part of our work to expand this. Is how do we braid together, right? The the partners who are interested, the young people who say, yes, this would be great. The various funding opportunities, the various, um, all the things, right, that mm-hmm. you need to be able to bring this to more young people in our region, in our state, and, and of course, why it's national nice. reach. It's young people advocating I was for just going to say that. Like, we have a ton of young people that listen to this because Hi, they want people. ideas yeah. and they, yeah. they, are going to save the world, yes, right? Yes. And so if if I'm an administrator and one of my students comes to me and says, hey, I heard about this project. There's we this need thing. this. Here's what I'm seeing amongst my peers. This yeah. is a evidence-based strategy that I know that, that I've heard works or that I've researched, which is all things that young people these days do, yeah. right? If they're going and advocating to their administrator, what administrator, honestly, is going to be like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Hopefully none. Hopefully none. That's but right. But actually, I mean, I think there's some words right from some of the young people themselves. Um, oh, yeah. uh, that, that, and here's where we're gonna here's where here. we're gonna end it. So le- leave us with some with some like yeah. inspiration oh, for today. Some okay. Powerful words. Yeah. Okay. So this is in. There's um, some great blog posts on our website around this. Um, so WymanCenter.org. WymanCenter.org. Um, so this is from one of our facilitators, um, who uh, one of one of our partner facilitators. This is actually from. New Mexico. And she said, TCP encouraged the teens to be true to their emotions, gave them tools and strategies to make connections, and made them feel a little less isolated. Mm -hmm. Seeing the teens smile and excited when sharing with the former strangers turned friends was one of the most memorable experiences of delivering teen connection projects. Did we have that like in 
right for everybody in this oh, country yeah. right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay, <laughs> that, now can that I That needs to but, be on a billboard like yeah. above y'all's <laughs> office. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's the adults and then this is from um, a young person actually um, in one of our program in our teen connection project at U City High School. Okay. So and this is actually um, they contributed this to a newsletter that we did about TCP and <sighs> okay. distributed. So uh, they say this is Giovanni. Giovanni says lesson 8 in TCP is Hashtag you matter. And I like this one because it shows appreciation and shows that we really care about others, especially our teachers. During our group, we made cards for adults who have made a positive difference at University City High School. Sometimes people don't get the recognition they deserve, but this is a way to give them their flowers. As students, we can have on and off days, and teachers have to deal with our attitude and put their own aside sometimes. When I gave my card, it seemed like they were having an off day, and then they lit up. You could tell it made their day. It feels good to give back, and hopefully it helps the community to be better. Yeah. Again, can we just have more of that for everybody? Yeah. Well, that's the best Pretty damn please. commercial for TCP that I've ever heard. And we're going to leave it there. Absolutely. Um, if you're interested in learning more about TCP, please reach out to the folks at Wyman. Um and uh, it's it's an or the top program also Absolutely. or if you're interested in camp wyman yeah. any of the things right Absolutely. any of the things you want to bring young people out yes you want to you want to get married at camp there's there's all the stuff <laughs> all the things we had a property. staff retreat at camp <laughs> yes. wyman so there's yes. all we did some some tree climbing that was super yeah. fun i think you threw hatchets we did we you? did, did we, we, uh-huh, we did that too <laughs> that people loved it yeah um seriously though Congratulations on the project. Thank Congratulations you. on your retirement. Thank you. Congratulations on your new ish role that's new-ish. been a long time in the making, that's my right. friend. That's yes. right. So, congratulations. Thank you, Nicole. If you like what you heard, please consider rating, reviewing, or subscribing like Claire just did. I did. Um, and if you want more information, seriously, go to WymanCenter.org, get all of it there. Uh, thank you so much for joining the Preventable. Oh, Nicole, thank you again for inviting us. Yeah, this was so fun. You made my day. Thanks for joining us at The Preventable, brought to you ad-free by Prevent Ed. Prevent Ed works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.